Here's a funny thing. Oftentimes I'll have writers ask me a question about writing and I can tell that they really hope that I'm going to give them a different answer than the one I do. And really you can tell that in the back of their minds, they know darn well what I'm going to say and they're just hoping against hope that maybe, just maybe, exceptions will apply to them. Let me tell you, there aren't that many rules when it comes to creative endeavors like writing or art. However, the minute that endeavor turns into a commercial project, which is the case if you're planning to publish and sell your book and find readers, there are some rules that you might want to know at least before you decide to break them. And one of these rules has to do with the length of your book. Does size matter when it comes to the length of your book? Well, I'm afraid to say, spoiler alert, it does matter. And in this episode of the How to Be an Author podcast, we're going to be talking about why does size matter? We're going to talk about why you probably might want to think about the rules and when you can break the rules. And we're going to be talking about what to do if your book is way too long and what to do if it's way too short. And of course, I'll be telling you about the different size guidelines that go along with the different genres of writing so that you know what you're talking about. And as always, if you've got any more specific questions, make sure to head on over to creativeandwritingcoach.com and you'll be able to sign up for a free chat with me, your writing coach, Karenna Akavain, and I can kind of clear up any questions that you have about the length of your book or about really pretty much anything else. We'll see how we can best work together or if you're a great candidate for my writing group or for one of my online courses that you can find on onlinecoursesforwriters.com. I just newly popped up a really fun quiz that's going to tell you whether my upcoming course from idea to publish in six months is right for you. So if you want to take that, I highly recommend it. It's kind of fun to take. It takes just a few minutes and it's going to tell you a lot about what kind of writer you are and what is right for you. So now Let's dive deep into this question of how long should your book be? If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. Okay, main question, does size matter and why? It absolutely does matter at the very least if you're thinking of publishing conventionally or if you're thinking of your book competing with other conventionally published books or more conventional format books. Why is this? It's because, first of all, if you're doing traditional publishing, there are costs involved with printing long books. Publishers will not take a chance on an extra large book from a new author. Yes, Tolkien and George R. R. Martin published these behemoths of books, but you've heard of those guys. They've been around forever. And in fact, they've been writing for such a long time that maybe some of these conventional pricing issues weren't exactly the same back then. And you think to yourself, yes, but what about with ebooks? It doesn't matter how long my book is. But yeah, when you're publishing conventionally, we're not talking just ebooks. We're talking about printed books. And you know what else we're talking about? We're talking about audiobooks. I think audiobooks are big business. And really, I'd like to encourage my writers to produce audiobooks of their books if they want to differentiate themselves. And this is something that I'm working on for my own books. But I think that if you have a 300,000 word book, that audiobook is going to be so long that it's going to be impossible to produce, impossible to load, impossible to record. Just think about it. It'll be a nightmare. So that's the other thing. Let's think about, okay, we're publishing our book with a conventional publisher. There's a cost to writing a book that's too big. But there's also a problem with publishing a book that's too short. When a book is too short, your reader feels like they're not getting their money's worth. Most publishers will not consider a book that goes outside of the norms. 
and let's talk about those norms in a second. But you're going to tell me, oh, I've seen exceptions. I've seen some writers, even newer writers, who have super long books, not just the Tolkien's of this world. Sure, those are the exceptions. But look at that like winning the lottery. We tell you, don't waste your money on lottery tickets. And that one person wins the lottery and you say, see, I was right. Well, great. But you could play the lottery your whole life and only lose money. The same goes for writing books that skew way outside of the norms. Why don't you wait until you're more successful as a writer, more known as a writer, and then maybe you can convince someone that your book way outside of the averages and the genre conventions is fine? Maybe you can do that. But until then, let's talk about what is expected. I would say that in general, things like thrillers or just conventional books skew around, I would say, 85 to 95,000 words. For many books, I tell people if you're writing like a thriller or sci-fi or historical, you can probably even hit around 100,000 words. That's fine. Some historical fiction can be even longer because you're going into greater detail, things like that. So, okay, let's cap it at 120,000 words. Anything above that, especially for a new writer and your publishing house or your reader are going to be thinking twice. Now, if you're writing romance, that skews a little bit shorter. And what does that come down to? It comes down to what kind of audience or reader you're dealing with. Different genres have readers expecting to consume those genres in different ways. Your average romance novel reader is looking at consuming lots of stories. They want that satisfying story arc. They want to fall in love with the characters and the romance of it all. They want to get swept away, but then they want to get to reading another book pretty soon. So a romance book can be a little shorter because many times your romance novel readers are moms or women who have a little bit of time to get away from it all. And they want these bite-sized books in a way that they can read in an afternoon or in a week. Now, for sure, if you're telling me, okay, I'm self-publishing, so can't I get away from these strict ideas? Sure. If you're definitely in the self-publishing realm, yes, you may have a little more leeway, that's for sure. You can produce things like novellas, novelettes, short stories, flash fiction, and even serial formats. I say go for it, explore the options. But look at how these different options are going to impact the way that you monetize your written work. I think that in general, your reader is going to have the opinion that books that are too short might not be fully developed. They might feel that the story arc's not going to be as satisfying as it could be. They might feel like they don't get the chance to get invested enough in your story. It ends too soon. They're not getting the bang for their buck. Conversely, books that are too long sometimes feel like maybe they lack focus, maybe they drag, maybe they go off on these weird, confusing tangents that are not necessary. That's really important too. Length affects a lot. Your reader doesn't want to feel like they're getting lost or like they're having to invest too much time in something that might not have a satisfying payoff. So all of those things are really crucial, and I want you to think about them objectively. And oftentimes, I think the best way to think about this is probably before you've gotten too far in the writing process, because I think it's important for you to decide, what kind of book am I writing? What kind of writer am I? How much am I aiming to produce? And if you're a new writer, it's really hard to figure out pretty much how long your book's going to be. Once you're more experienced, you tend to kind of automatically write books around your target work count, which is kind of funny. But don't worry too much about that word count when you're writing your first draft. My recommendation is get the story down, see how it feels, let the chips fall where they may, and then you're going to be taking stock and seeing how to either lengthen your story or shorten your story a little bit, okay? And there are going to be ways I'm going to tell you how to do this later in this podcast, but I do have one little caveat. If you're happily writing away 
and you're, you know, halfway through or whatever, and you see that your word count is already coming in at like 100,000 words or more, you may need to course correct because if you don't course correct now, you're gonna feel like there's a lot of editing to do. There's a lot of chopping out to do. And by course correcting, I do not mean chop the book in two and make it a series because that is rarely ideal. I'm gonna explain why to you. Let's talk about what really to do when your book is too long because again, splitting it in two because it's too long isn't going to work. You know why? It's because a novel needs a satisfactory, satisfying, complete story arc. Too many people think, oh, I'm going to create a series and people need to read every single book in the series and it's going to motivate them to read the whole series if my books are not complete. Well, that's not true. A satisfying story arc for each novel in a series is crucial. You need a good initial baseline situation. You need your character to have these goals that you explain. You need an inciting incident. You need your character to go through conflicts and obstacles as they try to reach that one goal that pushes the story forward into rising action, climax, and finally, resolution. Every book needs this, and it needs to be unique to the book. Each book in a series needs its own story arc like this. And if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, you're definitely going to want to go back and listen to my episode for how to be an author that's all about the story spine. This is earlier in this season, and it's going to be so useful to you to refresh your memory on what the elements of a good story are. And once you've checked out the episode on the story spine, you're going to want to go to the episode on Save the Cat. Save the Cat provides you with 15 beats that create a story based on the hero's journey. So this is kind of that prototypical archetypal story that's going to be very satisfying for your reader. And of course, once you have that, you can totally tweak it. But if you're kind of starting out and you're not sure what makes a good story, this is going to be crucial listening. You're also going to get so much out of my upcoming course from idea to published in six months. You're definitely going to want to sign up on my website, onlinecoursesforwriters.com, and take the quiz to see if this course is right for you. And also the quiz is going to tell you kind of what your issues are as a newer writer. Now, okay, let's say that your book is way too long, way too long. What do you do? You're going to first of all, create an outline scene by scene from your current draft. This is crucial. Outlines, very simple outlines, are going to help you to see whether your book is balanced or does it slow down somewhere? Does it drag in the middle? Is your plot charging forward in a way that's powered by causality, that's immediate, that's urgent? Or are there these slow scenes that feel kind of non-essential? Be honest. I know it hurts to cut things out, but make sure that you create a new document, put all the stuff that you throw away in it so that you don't feel like you've wasted your time with your writing. But really, honestly, you're not wasting your time because this is part of the writing process. Good writing is editing. And so tell yourself that you've gotten everything down and now you're paring it down to the essential bits that are going to tell a really tight, polished, well-told story. Another thing you can look for if your story is feeling too long is, do I have too many characters? I know a lot of younger, newer writers love to have a ton of characters. And of course they do. Characters are fascinating. We love to read about people. We love to learn about characters. We love to have them to be part of our story. We love our character to have friends and enemies and classmates. And we like to tell their backstory, but sometimes there are too many characters. Are these characters imperative to be put into your story? Can you tell your story without these characters? What are they doing? What's their role? If they're not crucial, take them out, kill them off, kill your darlings. Now look at your sentences. Are your sentences beautiful? Are they beautiful because they're flowery and full of imagery and full of amazing vocabulary? 
They might be too long. They might be too convoluted. They might be repetitive. Description's great, but sometimes it drags on for way too long. Sometimes they're non-essential words and phrases that you can take out. The same thing goes for dialogue. Sometimes there are the things like greetings and people talking about random chit chat. That's non-essential. Your dialogue could be pared down to a few lines. Now let's look at the plot as a whole. I talked about does it drag, but now is it overly complicated? A lot of writers have a ton of things happening in their book and that doesn't make a good story. People think that a story is more exciting if more things happen, but that's not necessarily true. A story is more exciting if the stakes are high and if there are obstacles thrown in there to prevent the character from getting to their goal and that you're afraid that they might not get to their goal and that creates suspense. That's a good story, but not your character doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, running around. It's not necessary. You don't need to have a ton of things happening to have a good story. And in fact, do you have a non-essential subplot? Again, lots of writers love to write these B stories, these subplots, other things happening to other characters while the main things are happening. And they think that this builds suspense. But if your subplot is not essential to the main plot, you're only going to be frustrating your reader who feels that the main story gets interrupted for no payoff whatsoever, except for distraction and confusion. Another thing that happens in too long stories are that readers get bored because there are these scenes that are like waking up, driving to work, eating a normal meal. You don't need those scenes. Take them out. The only scenes that need to be there are the ones where something happens, the ones that have conflict, tension, that present obstacles, that get us to know characters and their relationships more. Another problem that happens when stories are too long is that it starts too early, too long before the inciting incident. I want to get sucked into your story's world, and then I want to see that the stakes are increasing and that something happens to launch us into the main story. I don't want to know what happened 20 years before unless it's necessary, and I want to know that at the right moment. Speaking of that, how about backstory, flashbacks? Flash forward, info dumping. Do you have any of that? Be honest with yourself. You might. And you might be going off on these tangents at the same time. This is commonly seen, I would say, in historical fiction. I have seen too many instances where the author, and by the way, I've done this myself, you do this research, right? Your author does research, and once they've done all this research, they want to put it all into their book because, again, I did all this research. I don't want to waste my time and I want to enrich my book with all of these historical facts and all of this texture. But really, is it essential to your story? Make sure to think twice. Another thing is, are you telling in addition to showing? I've seen a lot of writers do this where they've communicated something really well through dialogue, body language, the whole thing that's going on in their scene. And then they go back into depth about how their character's feeling. Well, if it's well written, I already pretty much understand how your character's feeling. I probably don't need to be told again. That's just repetitive and it's frustrating. I feel like I'm being talked down to in a way. So your reader often will feel that way. So don't tell in addition to showing because that's adding just not much value and a lot of word count that you don't need. So those are my top tips for if your book's too long. Now, what do you do if your novel's too short? Honestly, I almost feel like, well, I think that both options are easier to fix than you would think. So if it's too long, it's just a question of editing down. If your novel's too short, A lot of people, their first reaction is, oh, I'm going to pat it like a high school essay. I'm going to add a bunch of words, a bunch of fluff, a bunch of description, maybe a few characters, maybe a few things happening, maybe another, you know, story happening. And that's going to make my book longer. Okay, you need to be really, really careful. This instance of your story being too short, it's not so simple to improve on that, but I'm going to tell you how to do it. So once again, you're going to create an outline like we did with the other option of a story being too long. We're going to create an outline from your current story. 
This outline is going to help us to see whether our story is well-balanced, well-developed. Are things happening too fast or too easily? Are there scenes that feel like they arrive too suddenly? Are we missing key scenes? Sometimes in your head as the author, you tend to fill in the blanks and jump over plot holes and jump over things that the reader might not understand. There are points that could be set up or explained better. There are relationships sometimes that unfold a bit too fast. I noticed this myself when I was doing my final draft of my novel, Gone to Ground, that I had a relationship between characters that kind of progressed a little bit too fast, and I really could have explored it a little bit more. So that's a step that I had skipped and that bought me a few more words. These sorts of things are sometimes hard to diagnose on your own, and this is really where beta readers are priceless. You can also join a good writing group because you can ask your you know, fellow writers how you're doing on character development or plot development or description or balance or pacing. They're definitely going to be telling you some important things about those points in your book. Joining a writing group can mean anything from doing something local where you're a round table of writers or you meet a couple times a month or once a week, or it can be a Zoom writing group like my writing group, which you can sign up for still and better do it fast because things are going to be changing around here. But do that on www.creativeandwritingcoach.com. And also, again, my upcoming course from idea to publish in six months is going to tell you the exact scenes that you definitely need in your book. And it's also going to help you to stay on track with how you're telling your story. So if your story is too short, you're also going to want to make sure that your character arc is developed enough for your main character, at least. We really want to know your main character, what makes them tick, how they're feeling, why they do what they do, why they want what they want. Also make sure that any secondary characters are fleshed out, but I did not say throw in a bunch of new characters. Really make sure that you're going for balance. Another thing that you want to check out is make sure you're scene setting enough. These rich descriptions, you don't want too much of them. Again, balance, but nice, rich, textured descriptions will help your reader to experience the world of your book more deeply. It's going to give it that flavor that makes a book unforgettable. Another thing to check for when your book's too short is, do you have enough dialogue? Dialogue really enriches a book in so many ways. It gets you to know characters. It gets you to learn facts without any info dumping. It sets the mood. There's so many things that dialogue does. And if you don't have enough, just look at that balance. Look at if you can see how much dialogue you have and it's like a tenth of your book. That's not enough. Add some dialogue. Also add some obstacles in the way of your character. That's very important. Do they get to where they want to be all too easily? Then make their life harder. That's going to add interest and it's going to add tension. It's going to improve your pacing and it's going to add that word count. So speaking of the pacing, can you improve your pacing through setting up a sense of suspense and tension? Sometimes slowing down is key when it comes to upping that tension, that suspense, and raising the stakes in your book. If you're really, truly very much under on your word count, you may need to hire a developmental editor to see how to further develop your novel. There's a chance that maybe a subplot could help, but don't just tack one on. It needs to be well integrated into your story and it needs to enrich your main plot. Adding a subplot is definitely not the easy way out. So you're going to want to think twice before you launch into that one. That's a whole other issue that we're going to be developing in a further podcast. So you'll want to subscribe if you're not subscribed because you're not going to want to miss that one. I hope that this helped you out. And I'm really curious, do you tend to go over or under on your word counts? Please feel free to shoot me an email and let me know how you feel about that. And again, if you're really confused on how to improve your word count either up or down and you think maybe I can have a quick fix for you, sign up to have a quick writing chat with me. All you need to do is go on my website www.creativeandwritingcoach.com and you can sign up for that 15 minute chat. Again, time is of the essence because things are changing around here on the website, but right now you can still do that and I can help to add value and tell you what's going to make your book 
really shine. Whether you're publishing conventionally or self-publishing, let's get it into a format that your reader is going to best enjoy and a format that serves your story best. I hope this really helped you out and inspired you and motivated you to make sure that your word count is everything it's supposed to be. I look forward to being with you next time on the How to Be an Author podcast. If you have any pressing writing-related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com.